All right, all right, all right. The end of Amos is where we're at. Welcome to another episode of the Bible in One Year with the Preacher's Husband. Today, of course, we're going through Amos chapter 6 through 9, and tomorrow we're going to go through 2 Chronicles 27 and Isaiah 9 through 12. So we are going to jump into it. Chapter 6 is woe to the complacent. You know, complacency is not really a good thing. Anytime you're complacent, you're basically happy where you're at. You don't want to improve. You don't want things to go bad. Any worse than they are, you just you just cruising along, just just going through the status quo. You're happy that you got nice things. You're happy that everything's just peachy and perfect. Well, it's not peachy and perfect in Israel, clearly. And Israel's pride is judged in this chapter. And then we get to chapter 7 where we start off with the first of the five visions. And the first vision that Amos has is the vision of locusts. And of course this is a horrible, horrible thing. When locusts come through they consume everything. Everything is dead. They eat it all. It's all bad. So Amos is like, whoa, God, hold up a second. Please forgive these guys. How's Jacob going to survive if he, since he is so small, how's he going to survive this? And the Lord's like, okay, okay, this isn't going to happen. We're not going to do that. So it gives him a second vision. And Amos' second vision is a fire. So there's all this fire and this terrible, horrible fire devouring the land in the deep. And he goes to God and says, please stop. How will Jacob survive since he is so small? And the Lord said, oh, okay, okay, I'm not going to do that. That's not going to happen either. So then there's this thing called a plumb line. And uh, the Lord stand there and he's like, the Lord asked me, what do you see, Amos? And he replied, a plumb line. And, he said, and the Lord said, I'm setting a plumb line among my people, Israel. I will no longer spare them. Now, a plumb line is basically... It's, it's for, for measuring and making sure things are, are square, level, and when you're building a house. You, everything has to be based off of this plumb line. This is your main line. This is your mind that, line that shows you a perfect straight up and down angle. You get a perfect 90 degree angle, whatever angles you want to do in the room. The plumb line is your start. That's, that's how you're, you're going to measure and gauge. If you veer off of that straight and narrow plumb line you end up crooked and basically what God is saying is that everybody's crooked nobody's straight and following this plumb line everybody's crooked they're crooked in their ways they're crooked uh, physically mentally they're dirty they're dirty and crooked is what he's saying here now the next um, vision here is a basket of summer fruit and I'm thinking to myself what can be bad about a basket of summer fruit that's looks kind of good and then I come up with this little gem here so the the verse itself says this is what the sovereign lord jehovah showed me look there was a basket of summer fruit then he said what do you see amos i replied a basket of summer fruit then jehovah said to me the end has come for my people israel i will no longer pardon them so what did the basket of summer fruit signify what's this it signified that the day of jehovah was near summer fruit is picked toward the very end of the harvest season so that is toward the end of the agricultural year so when jehovah caused amos to see a basket of summer fruit it meant that the end was near for israel that last harvest is the end of growing they're not going to grow anymore they're going to get plucked and be done they're going to be harvested therefore god told amos the end has come to my people israel i shall no more do any further excusing of them and then of course the last vision is the lord beside the altar and this is all about destruction it's about destroying the altar and nothing is safe but one thing stuck out to me amos chapter 9 verse 6 and basically what all this is saying is that nobody is going to be safe at this point nobody whether high or low status will escape God's judgment. Amos 9, 6 says this, He builds his lofty palace in the heavens and sets his foundation on the earth. He calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out over the face of the land. The Lord is his name. Now, when I read this in the, the New King James about he sets his foundation on the earth, it reads, and his found, his 
and has founded his strata in the earth. Well, there was this guy, um, James Dwight Dana. He lived from 1813 to 1895, and he was a famous um, geologist, mineralologist, even a zoologist, and he became the president of the Geological Society of America, as well as the American Association for the Advance of Science. And he stated this, that grand old book of God still stands, and this old earth, the more its leaves are turned over and pondered, the more it will sustain and illustrate the sacred word. Amos illustrated some of his visions tonight, and of course, the word of God, I believe, is illustrated through science, through earth, through everything we see. Everything we study, and the more and more we dig, the more and more we find truth right here. Blessings, I hope this has touched you. If it has, of course, uh, click that like button, share it, follow, subscribe, rumble with me, and all that good stuff. So I hope to see you again tomorrow for another episode of the Bible in One Year with the Preacher's Husband. We'll see you then.